financially, and then you just came back also with retiring and ended up going on with. Yeah, I wouldn't say that was much of a message as much as uh, we knew we were in a lot of situations where we could have scored and uh, didn't. We missed a couple, and then also just didn't get in the end zone a couple times. So, I mean, so we knew we had stuff there. Uh, we just had to execute it better. So I guess if there's a message, it would just be like, uh, we knew what was going on. We knew what they were going to run, and we just got to execute better and hit them. You guys didn't have uh, much of a run game uh, for the you know large three three quarters of the game, but the wide receiver screens. Were you surprised that you were able to run that play kind of over in Oregon and still get eight I nine yards? I wasn't surprised. I, our, our receivers are exceptionally good blockers for sure. So they do a good job on the edge, and then they do a good job making people miss. Uh, you get three over three out there, and you just gotta make one guy miss theoretically if you're making only blocks. So that's the way we approach it, and uh, it's just a number game, numbers game for us. If they overload the box, and we're gonna put it outside and make you run. I guess were you surprised that they kept kind of giving that to you and not making an adjustment? I mean, a little bit, yeah, I guess. But I, I wouldn't say I was surprised. I was just like, I mean, if they're going to do it, they're going to throw it. So just out there playing ball at that point. You guys are down 27-13 and then come roaring all the way back. Did you feel the moment? You had the nice touchdown to 87 and then uh, the pick, and then you had the nice 50-yard touchdown after that. Did you feel the momentum swing at that point going into the fourth quarter? Yeah, that touchdown to Dre was a big one for sure. Uh, I said I really felt that momentum swing when we tied it up, uh, scored like two touchdowns within like 20 seconds or something like that. Uh, that's when it kind of felt like, all right, here we go. It's a game now. Like we got, we got this. So that's where I, that's where I would say I felt the most shift the most. Kevin, you guys were up against uh, the freshman making his first start. Did you guys do anything like pressure-wise or coverage-wise that maybe you didn't do in the past? Uh, nothing we haven't done in the past. Uh, we definitely had a little more uh, disguises in our coverages. Uh, just knowing that we might be able to get in his head and kind of confuse him a little bit. But I think he did a pretty good job of, of uh, completing passes. Uh, I think the only time we got him was that interception we got late in the, in the third quarter. But uh, nothing out of the ordinary, really. Uh, just kind of went in there and played our game and um, knew if we had executed that we'd, uh, we'd be pretty solid. What adjustments did, did you guys make in the second half defensively? Uh, we really didn't make that many adjustments. Uh, I mean, they had a couple of big plays on us uh, throughout the game, but overall, I felt that we were pretty, uh, pretty solid. And you know, if it's just a case of guys executing and uh, eleven guys doing their jobs, but not very many adjustments were made, really. What did you think of the hail mary at the end of the first half, and how did you not let that affect your mindset in the second half? Uh, definitely uh, get you thinking a little bit. Uh, we went in the second, in the, in the halftime, and knew that. Uh, you know, it's just one of those plays that, that they made that we didn't, and it was something that was definitely avoidable. Um, it's one of those things you got to bow back from. And it's one, one thing that uh, we know that if we just execute, do our job, uh, they wouldn't make any more of them. So. Gage, they were running a lot of that shell coverage with like a one high safety. Is it unexpected, expected, and how were you able to have so much success? They did everything that we thought they did. They, did, they, were, they were just who we saw on film, uh, so we were ready for it and we had a good game plan for it. Was that was that the key to your success? Just being prepared for what exactly what they're going to throw at you? Yeah, it always is. I would say. I mean, you always got to be prepared for that, and you also got to be prepared to make adjustments if teams are going to throw some different coverage or front or whatever they're going to do. But uh, it, did, it does help when you go out there and you can confirm on that first possession that they're exactly who we thought they were. Gage is always a, a big game, but it kind of kicks off big sky play. Um, how important is this, is this win for you guys? It's a big one, big win for us. I mean, it's not easy to come here and win. I think the last time we did it in 2012 is what Coach Best was telling us. Before that, it was like 2005 or something like that. So it it's not often, it's not a uh, reoccurring occurrence, I guess I would say. But uh, I think that it's big for us not just to get a win here, but just to start off 1-0 in the Big Sky. So how any team in uh, the Big Sky wants to start off. So happy to be in that spot. And uh, just a half. Um, those, those are tough things to, to come around from. But what I do know, and everybody here knows, that Eastern Washington University, regardless of who's coaching, it's just a matter of who's playing. They've always played for 60 minutes. That's never been an issue. So even anybody that questions that is absolutely unde undeniably wrong. They, they're, they're not, that's not who we are. So uh, we didn't want that one play to eat us up the next two quarters. Uh, it wasn't a magical speech. Coach Ball never gave magical speech. That's just the culture we, that we've provided for our kids. Uh, and, they, and they buy into it. And they uh, do a good job uh, with, uh, with anything that, that comes their way. What would you say was the biggest difference in the second half then? Was it, was it coaching? Was it adjustments? Was it execution? Well, I mean, a couple things come to mind without the stats in front of me. The red zone opportunities ended in seven points instead of three points. 
Uh, we had a few big plays uh, that screen to Sam McPherson, kind of got us rolling. I think I don't know if it got us tied or within one score. Um, I think that was a one or two play drive, uh, about 50 yards uh, that ended up getting some uh, downfield blocking. Uh, and long plays don't happen or occur without downfield blocking by receivers and or offensive linemen getting downfield. Um, it wasn't one play. It was just a matter of we, we felt like we, we were about four explosive plays away on defense, having a pretty good half in the first half. We just gave up too many big plays. We call those explosives. And if you take away those explosives, I think we're, it was a different ball game. It would have been a tighter ball game in the first half. Uh, but those guys just, just kept chopping wood. They believed in the system. Uh, we got on track or on track uh, in that first series. It got it to within two scores and played. Uh, I think we played lights out on defense in the second half. So it just kind of it was kind of a, a, a well played ball game that last 30 minutes on in three phases. That uh, kickoff cover team, uh, I was very very proud of. I don't know that uh, the starting field position was much further than about the 20 22 all day. Uh, so long field makes offenses further away to go and. Uh, uh, give give Montana credit. That quarterback looked like a five year starter. That guy threw a lot of a lot of BBs and uh, he put it on a lot of guys and they made a lot of plays in the air and they tested our corners. They they put those corners in a bind trying to go up top. But uh, we withstood uh, the the uh, the opportunities or the tries by them and we we came out victorious. So I'm proud of those kids. How do you think you guys were able to keep guys better in the second half than the first half? I just think we got into more of a rhythm. Uh, a little bit. We had some some explosives on our end too that we I, I felt just like anything. Momentum kind of you, you get a little giddier. You have a 20, 20 yard play. You're not as as down, um, and you, you you kind of understand that, that those things could occur more often. And so I think we just we the the, the environment is incredible here. Number one, when you start a retro freshman left tackle, we did the same thing two years ago when we had a retro freshman right tackle. Um, and that's not easy to do when you're in a no, no verbal cadence. I mean, so make no bones about it. It wasn't like we played with 22 starters that started the first game of the year. So give a lot of credit to those guys that stepped up to make the plays. Everybody's got injuries. But when you, when you start a retro freshman left tackle, uh, as an offensive line, former offensive line coach, you, you, there's some nerves. Not nervous, <laughs> but there's some nerves that go on uh, when you can't even hear yourself think here. Uh, but Brett Thompson did a fabulous job, and I think it was just a matter of, we, we got rolling, and when our defense started getting stops, we started having shorter fields, and we started scoring seven points instead of three points. Do you feel like the touchdown right after halftime was key to kind of put the Hail Mary behind you? I, I think those are always, culture. I think those are always uh, important points coming after halftime because uh, we in the past have always kind of been a third quarter score on the first possession type of outfit over the years. And I think that helps no matter what's happened in the, in the late second quarter, what's good in your favor or not in your favor, I think those points after halftime truly matter. Because you don't get points, you feel like, boy, we're still three scores out. They get the ball back, and now all of a sudden you could be looking at a four-score deficit. So without question, scores at any point in the game are, are important. But I think that first quarter and that third quarter, uh, if and when you're receiving the football, I think are, are extremely important. At what point did you feel like the momentum really shifted in your favor? You know, like I said, uh, you know, Sam McPherson with that long, uh, long, uh, uh, or not long pass, but the five-yard pass and turned into a 50-yard little scamper uh, down our sideline. Uh, I think that was kind of the, the, the Uncle Mo, as they say. I think, I think those guys started thinking, okay, we can make some people miss. We, we, we attacked the exterior of that defense a little bit. We made some people miss. Nick Splendorio, first three games, everyone wanted to know why he's fumbling so much. Now tonight, I think someone said he had a possible school record of catches out of 18 catches. Was, is that right? I mean, that's phenomenal. I mean, his, and his name's not Cooper, and he doesn't wear number 10. <laughs> Um, so those are the types of things that everybody's wanted to know to this point. And here you are, front center, Nick Splendorio, Gage Gubru, where, where were those guys the first two games? They, they've always been here. But Texas Tech's a pretty good outfit. North Dakota State's a pretty good outfit. And so we just got we just the timing and things got to keep occurring. Uh, but, but guys stepped up. And guys stepped up after not being able to step up as much as they maybe would have or could have in the first three games. So I'm extremely proud of these guys. One in the Big Sky Conference, especially when your first one to Missoula. Uh, is a uh, is a tough thing to come by. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm proud of this proud of this locker.